Ooh, suddenly scalding shower, scary sounds you hear at night, overflowing bowl without a hole to stop the mess, unexpected snake in your home. Yes, your toilet has something to do with all this. Looks all guilty sitting over there, doesn't it? Looks kind of flush if you ask me. Well, it's time to find out more about the thing you probably use more often than anything else. Have a seat. There's no overflow hole in the toilet because that extra hole would get clogged more easily than the main one. The drain at the bottom is an overflow hole already. A curved pipe at the base of a toilet called S-Bend works as a hill the water can't get over. If the bowl starts overflowing, the flow itself creates a siphon effect draining the bowl. Now, very, very rarely, a snake can show up in your bowl. Snakes can get into a toilet through an opening in the sewer looking for mice and rats often hiding there. They slither their way within the pipes and through the S-Bend I just told you about. So, what would you do if this happened to you? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Now, flushing cooking grease as well as all other kitchen scraps down the toilet will eventually clog the drain. Bad, bad, bad. This stuff doesn't separate properly and congeals, sticking to the pipes. The best way is to put cooking grease in some plastic bottle or a jar with a lid and throw it in the trash. Now, your shower gets too hot when someone flushes the toilet if your plumbing consists of a trunk and branch system. A big pipe goes through the whole building from one end to the other, and small pipes run from it to get water to individual fixtures. Since the tank is filled only with cold water, your shower doesn't get enough of it to mix with the hot water. And wahoo! Ah, self-flushing toilets, the wonder of the modern world. Toilet sensors know when to flush using the same infrared light and detectors as your TV remote control. Those detectors emitting a continuous beam notice when infrared light is reflected from the user. To boot, there's a microchip that controls all the work and helps reduce the chance of false activation when someone simply walks past the toilet. Toilet water moves when it's windy in many houses, at least in the US, because there's a vent pipe that goes outside to the roof. When the wind blows really hard above that pipe, the air pressure in it is lowered. The air tries to escape from the pipe, creating a slight suction effect throughout the plumbing system that gets the water sloshing. If you hear a whistling sound after you flush or randomly during the night, it means there's something wrong with a fill valve. The fill valve is responsible for the amount of water that goes into the tank after flushing. As it ages, its internal parts can deteriorate, causing some strange noises emanating from your porcelain friend. No, no, other sorts of strange noises. When the weather gets warm and humid, your tank might start sweating. The warm air comes in contact with a tank filled with cold water, and condensation forms on the outside. It can seriously harm your floor, tiles, and, if your toilet is old, even the bolts holding the toilet to the floor. The other reason for a damp tank might be a leaking flapper. Check your flapper regularly. Most European bathrooms use a washdown system in which water inside the tank is forced out through water flowing from the rim of the bowl. Most American toilets use a siphonic system in which the used toilet water is forcibly drawn down the drain. Also, a high water line makes it easier to keep the bowl clean. And why American toilets have so much water in them. Toilets are made of porcelain because it's very smooth, so there's no place for particles to get stuck in. The material is non-porous, which makes it a great protection from bacterial buildup. What's more, porcelain doesn't corrode or oxidize, so it lasts longer. It's also easily molded into different shapes, which makes it perfect for tanks, lids, and drains. Sometimes, when you flush the toilet, it keeps running until you jiggle the handle. Most likely, the toilet flush handle gets stuck, causing the tank stopper to stay open. Oiling and tightening the handle might help. If not, then you need to replace it. To check if you have a hidden water leak, Drop some food coloring into the tank, wait for 10 minutes, and then see if the water in the bowl has changed to that color. If so, then it's time to call your plumber. Doors in public toilets don't reach the floor because it's just cheaper. Less material means lower price. It also makes cleaning easier. 
One just runs a mop under the door without opening and then closing it. The gap lets you know if the stall is occupied or not. And finally, if you're out of toilet paper, a neighbor can help you out. Some toilets refill quickly and you can flush again immediately, if you need to, while others take much longer. If you have a good hose with high pressure, your tank gets full fast. If your hose is a bit silted, you'll have to wait. Also, living on a higher floor or far away from the water supply makes it more difficult to pump water to your tank. If your toilet flushes slowly, there might be something wrong with the flush mechanism, venting, or a blockage in the waistline. Without quick flushing, the movement won't create the suction in the pipe that washes the waste down the drain. You might never forget about cleaning and flushing the toilet, but those nasty stains can still appear in your bowl. They're a buildup from minerals hard water is rich in. You can try to get rid of them using vinegar. Just pour it in the bowl and scrub with a toilet brush. If you flush with the lid up, tiniest particles of everything that's in the bowl <clears throat> can fly up to 15 feet in the air and land all over your bathroom. Those particles might carry infectious bacteria that are potentially harmful for your health. So save yourself and put the lid down. The blue water from the drop-in tank toilet fresheners might look great, but most plumbers say they're bad for your toilet. The chemicals in those tablets can wear out working parts inside the tank. And when they break down, their parts might prevent the toilet from flushing. That gap on the seat that makes it look like the letter U is there because of plumbing codes. According to them, since 1995, all public toilets must have an open seat. The gap also protects your most private areas from unwanted droplets. Hey, thanks for that! Those toilet seat covers don't actually save you from germs, since they're absorbent. Bacteria and viruses are super small, so they easily soak in through the paper the covers are made of. But here's the good news. Catching an infection from a toilet seat is only possible if your skin is broken and comes into direct contact with the seat. Toilets with two flush buttons work like this. The big button flushes the full tank, the smaller one flushes half a tank to save water. For an easier and quicker way of identifying which button to push, the mechanism was later modified. Pressing the button for a short amount of time gives a half flush, and a longer push gives a full flush. Even though toilet paper is supposed to break down when it gets wet, some public bathrooms tell you not to flush it. There's still a possibility of clogging if you use way too much toilet paper or the plumbing system isn't new. So if you see such a sign, just do as you're told and use the bin. Finally, we thought we'd give the toilets an opportunity to tell their side of the story. You can just imagine the stories they must have. Sadly for them, the view never changes. But so far, we've heard nothing. All we can say to our friend the toilet is, tanks a lot.